What about my MVPs and welcome back to my channel. As I am filming this, it is the end of 2019 and I am looking forward into 2020. Last year, I did a video about how much money I made in 2018. This video, I'm going to talk to you about how much money I made in 2019. At the end of the video, I'm going to reveal the price amount, but I think it is important for you to stick through this video because I'm going to give you a lot of information about why I'm doing certain things or why certain events actually happen. You're going to notice that on this spreadsheet, a lot of what I have, I don't make money for. But what I don't get in money, I get an opportunity. And some of those experiences actually turn into lucrative events later on. I'm also going to mention that this video is going to be lengthy. So if you want to get up and take a stretch, maybe look at this video while you're washing dishes, have some food, drink some water, maybe brush your teeth. Why did I say brush your teeth? <laughs> Whatever you're going to do, you might want to do this while you're doing something else. So the way I go about these spreadsheets are very simple. I usually have the date, then I have the venue. I have the function so that if it's uh, something I'm making from Patreon or it's a consultation or if it's a performance or it's some sort of lecture or something, then the time because time is money and your time is valued. So whenever I can account for time, I'll have the time noted there and how much I invested or earned. I use the vocabulary word investment from Minimalist Vegan Lifestyle, my partner. Uh, she thinks that anytime you pay out for something, it should be an investment because you're investing towards your own well-being. You're investing towards your future, you're investing towards your own success. So if you change your mindset, you are changing your life. And that's the direction I've been trying to progress with and my professional work life as well. Another thing I wanna note last year compared to this year, you're going to see a change in how I made the bulk of my money. As to last year, I had this larger manuscript project in which I was editing a book for someone, as well as doing a docu-poetics project, which means I, uh, I took some documentation of some folks I was interviewing and then transcribed them into poems. This year, instead of having programs and manuscripts, the bulk of my income came through Patreon. So Patreon, is a community in which I work with month to month on editing their poems and I give them free consulting advice. So if that's something that you're interested in, click on the link below to my Patreon community and join up. It's so great and there's so much specific attention you can get on Patreon that you don't get on this YouTube channel. So let's think about January first. So in January, a lot of what I did was online work. So when we're looking at my first three different venues, uh, I did a consultation in January. My consultations are usually 30 minutes. All the consultations I did this year were with Patreon subscribers, so they get a bit of a discount. If you're doing a consultation with me without the Patreon discount, I'm, I'm going to charge just a little more. If you want to know my numbers, uh, you can hit me up in the comment box below, or you can go to my website, DemetriaReyesPoet.com, and check out my services and send me a message there. When January was my big Patreon initiative in 20 in the beginning of 2019 so it's I, I did a full overhaul you can see that video in the cards above and I had my first uh, subscriber thank you Nate for kicking it with me since January uh, Nathan is an awesome awesome poet so awesome that he writes like 10 to 12 poems a, a, a night and it's insane that this guy just creates uh, tons and tons of work and I'm so blessed and happy to be working with him um, so that was 691 um, poetry edits from Nate he hit the ground running he was like yo D I need more help than just uh, patreon so in the beginning what ends up happening with some of my patrons we do a lot more work than just what is happening on the patreon community so he consulted with some poetry edits there too I had another poetry consultation, uh, so that was a video chat that was $25. Um, 2019 was the year of radio shows. I got a chance to take part in several different radio shows uh, online. The coolest part about that was be, be, was that they were broadcasted uh, worldwide. Uh, so one of them was broadcasting in South Africa. This one was just uh, a United States local, and that was a really cool experience. Uh, I, it was myself and a bunch of other of my poetry artists and activists in Brick City Collective that was able to sit in and talk about poetry and how we're serving the people with our artistry. On January 22nd, Rutgers Healing Sounds of Newark. So um, always think of your alma maters, uh, wherever you graduate from, uh, your high schools, your middle schools, 
Think of all the contacts that you have. Those contacts are great to have. I've been blessed enough to work with Rutgers University after graduating two years ago, and consistently because I'm involved with Rutgers University Newark and the city of Newark, my city and the university call me yearly, uh, basically, for different opportunities. Per actually, actually, as a matter of fact, I, uh, for 2020, I am probably slated on January 31st to do something uh, with Rutgers University also. One thing I wanna mention though, if you are an artist, it's going to be hard to sustain yourself as an artist, booking performances and doing community events in which you're getting paid for because your stipends, your honorariums, and the grants that you are receiving sometimes don't come in on time. And I know a lot of poets that chase down these places to try to get their money back. Uh, I'm quite the opposite because I always try to have a steady stream of income and then have my poetry supplement or my artistry supplement my income. So I just wait for it to come. In this instance, I did this show in January on January 22nd and I didn't get that check until August. That happens a lot, but it's really satisfying when you're just sitting at home, you're collecting your mail, you think you're gonna get the bills, and then all of a sudden you have a random check that comes in the mail, so that's always really nice. So on January 25th, uh, a very dear friend of mine, Hugo Dos Santos, launched his book of short stories, Then There. That was a friend's event, and I actually recorded for him. Um, I didn't get paid for that, but what you're going to see on this list too, I don't only put events that I am a part of, that I'm like performing in, um, I also put events that I am supporting. Those are also important because uh, being a part of the artist community means that you are in a community. You all learn from each other. I didn't really get an uptick in what my artistry and craft was like until I surrounded myself with individuals that were doing the same thing. Moving on to February. So in February, Patreon started taking off and this is where it started beginning. So I went from $6.91 on Patreon and I jumped up to $57. Um, in February, I also participated in the Boog City uh, Poetry Festival. I think it was number 12 and a half because they have two in a year. For Boog, I didn't have it tracked here, but I did have to pay uh, on the Metro card to get there. Um, I forgot how much time it was, but I'm pretty sure it was like about three or four hours. And I read for about 15 or 20 minutes, but you know, you have to stay for the festival, hear some of the other readers and stuff like that. But what you do make from those, even though some of those festivals and some of these events aren't paid, uh, try to have giveaways that you can sell while you're there. Try to have some merchandise, right? So I have an artist book called Deep Cuts and I made a video on making these artist books and it'll be on the card above. And these have been my bread and butter because I would have my performances and I would read a couple of poems from here and I would talk about it a little bit because my fiance did all the artist work in it and I really like when artists can collaborate and do things together. So I read a couple of poems from those. It acts as its own billboard and then afterwards I say I'm selling these for a very very expensive five dollars so you know you turn on the charm five dollars is the fifteen dollars on a regular book people are kind of drawn to it and want to buy it just to support you and then you make some money from that so that day I made thirty five dollars thirty five dollars divided by five dollars is math so I sold a lot of books that day it was great and then in February I did another consultation um, I believe by this point I was doing consultations with a uh, particular poet, uh, Raina, is awesome. I'm also going to have her information here. Hey, Raina. Um, La Reina. So I'm going to have her information there. I was working with her a lot for the past couple of months uh, in the beginning of the year. And uh, she's also shown so much improvement. I'm so proud of her. She's like... She's awesome. So I went to Rob Hilton's book launch. Rob Hilton has been a poet in the spoken word scene in New Jersey since the 90s, carrying the spoken word scene. He's a big name, and this is his first book, a culmination of about 30 years of work. So there was poets from Rahway and Central New Jersey and Newark and a bunch of places that went to support him, so I had to buy his book and support that. The radio show, I sold two more books. I think at that radio show, um, there was people that were there, like the sound engineer and the host that was there, they wanted to buy it after I read. So they took those books. Um, and then the NLAC African Poetic Soul, uh, that was a feature that I performed at. It was pretty dope to be there. And then I have Patreon and some editing. In March, 
In March, I linked up with Melissa West. Melissa West is an awesome yogi on YouTube, but little do people know she is also a poet. That's why sometimes uh, with her yogic meditations and her yoga classes, she'll have poems or prompts inserted there throughout the process, which is really cool. Hey, Melissa. So in March, I also got another uh, artist book order online and a Teespring sale. So my shirts are pretty expensive. This shirt is actually from Minimalist Vegan Lifestyles uh, Teespring shop. I have all the other poetry shirts. Um, they're pretty expensive, but I need you to know that I don't make too much off of that. I only get what's viewed here, which is the 474. And then on the 31st, I have another feature. Now going into April, uh, National Poetry Month, uh, there was the Patreon payment. As you can see, it's slowly progressing. Now I'm at 64.34. I had some poem edits online, probably from Nate. And I took a workshop with Jan Beatty. Now, it's always great to invest into your work, and when you invest into your work with uh, retreats, some sort of submissions or contests, and workshops, they're great when forming your poetic identity because they kind of give you those little uh, pushes that you need for your work. They make you see work in a different way, and you end up forming relationships with a lot of these people. Uh, you're going to notice there's several people I take workshops with throughout the years, and I end up forming really good relationships with them. Well, two of them particularly, one is Patricia Spears Jones, which she is a sweetheart and a wonderful woman. Uh, I've taken, I've performed with her once uh, and that was like one of my first legitimate performances in New York City and then I took a workshop with her and she remembered me and we started talking and now we're very good like Facebook friends and then Reggie Gaines I took a workshop with him I fangirled over Reggie Gaines for such a long time because of um, Deaf Poetry Jam and he's done a lot of work out in Newark and I just really dig his style and when he's down in Jersey he's now in California he reaches out to me uh, we chill he goes to my events, I go to his events, so it's pretty cool. Uh, it's What's essential in poetry is forming those relationships with people, and I say that a lot. Uh, April 13th, uh, Willie Perdomo had a book launch uh, for his new book, Crazy Bunch, that came out this year. It is an epic book. I suggest all of you go buy it. I'm not getting paid uh, to, to tell you to go buy it, but it's just a really amazing book. He is like the padrino of the New Yorkian poetry scene, and he's just an awesome cat to be around. And when he was going on this big bash, every place he went to, he invited like five or six people to go read for him for his book launch. And I was honored to be one of those people uh, with his very large laundry list of folks that he knows uh, to be able to perform before he came up. So my, I actually wrote a poem for that occasion about him, about an experience we had the year before. And then on April 14th, uh, Isabel Y. Gonzalez had her book launch for her book Wild Invocations, which I wrote a real you for and it's coming out in Barrel House. That should be out already by the time this video comes out. Uh, I think the Barrel House one comes out on January 6th. So that'll be in the description box below. You can look at the review about the book. It's a really great first book and if you want to purchase it I'll have the link there as well. On April 23rd uh, one other radio show I had was at Nork FM. So that was in the city of Nork. It was a it's a Nork broadcast radio station. Then on online on Patreon I got another 64 uh, 29 uh, for I did a consultation for 30 minutes um, I did some manuscript editing for a friend of mine so she compensated me for that oh and, and that was actually in May so I went into May already so going through those things and now we're on May 18th uh, the ICC which is the Ironbound Community Center 50th anniversary workshop um, I was a workshop facilitator uh, it was really awesome that was the first time I legitimately just facilitated a workshop by myself and for that I got a hundred dollars which is so great because another thing I would tell you to do no matter how many people show up to your events or how many people show up to your workshops uh, throughout those four hours I probably only had like three or four people that stood for the whole workshop and maybe two or three floaters which is fine but no matter if they're in your audience or in your workshop you have 
three people, five people, or a hundred people. Uh, my fiance and I had this conversation a while ago. You should always perform as if you are in front of, of thousands of people because you never know who's going to be in those audiences or who would want you for something else. I mentioned that Rutgers event that I'm doing again uh, in January 2020. That was the Rutgers event I did in, in January 2019. One of the folks that were there administrating the event got me this gig with another department within the university. So you just never know who's going to be there. And I say this because during that workshop, I had so many good reviews that in June, they brought me back for a workshop during a bigger festival that was outdoors during the summertime and it accompanied a reading. So they paid me even more for that. I got 100 for that workshop in May, but in June for the workshop and the reading, I got 350. So that's a big percentage increase. I also did Nork FM again, this time with Brick City Collective. I really would suggest for you to check out Brick City Collective. Uh, to check them out, you can look at my interviews playlist. I've interviewed everyone from Brick City Collective and a couple of other people outside of Brick City Collective. Uh, I'm only missing Leah Jackson and I'm missing Cindy Goncalves, but I'm going to get them in next year. But you can get the bulk of Brick City Collective by looking at those interviews. Then on June 14th, uh, uh, the Brick City Collective had an event at the Artfront Gallery, which was a really uh, dope event. The Nork River Day, uh, I got paid 120 for that. It was a poetry feature. Uh, now for July, August, and September, you're going to see that I didn't do anything else except uh, pass, go, and collect whatever money I was getting on Patreon. So if you look at those numbers, they dropped a little bit uh, to $50, $57, and then in September, there was an uptick and it jumped up to $71. I didn't do anything else for those three months because during that time, I was doing a van build with my fiance. In September, I started two different projects uh, that I'll be a part of. Uh, I'm going to be a part of the Moving Words project. I submitted to this during the summer with Arts by the People. In 2020, they're going to be taking one of my poems that would, that would be voice recorded, and they're sending it to Israel to have a bunch of different uh, artistic engineers and sound engineers make an animation or some sort of poetry video out of that. And then there's this really big festival in Israel that they're going to showcase it, and then there's like a small competition we're entered in and stuff. And it's a really cool multidisciplinary collaboration between the literary arts and the visual arts and the graphic arts. So I'm really excited for that. I love mixing my mediums with other mediums, as you could tell from the artist book and what you've seen me do with dancers and musicians. It's just a really good time. So anytime that I could take my work and blend it with something else, it is great. So in September and October, um, you're going to see that I, I do those moving words workshops. So we are doing a writing intensive of those poems and we're workshopping them to make it feasible for translation as well as something that might be easier for the graphic artist to understand and interpret as graphics. And also you're going to see that I have the NJIT from page to stage here. So this was an interview project that a Nork artist decided to create. She's a professor at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. So she decided to take her students and have them interview 17 Nork artists uh, from all different stages of their career. And I was so lucky that I was able to be one of those people. Thanks, Lily. You're great. I love what you're doing for the community. If you're watching, this. Uh, I don't want to put so many links in the description box, but if you want to look at that, it is in my press section on my website. Uh, check out the website because everything that I'm talking to you about is on the website, so you can see all that from the website. We were supposed to interview twice. Uh, and then after I interviewed with my student twice, they were supposed to make a monologue of it. And then in December, they were presenting that monologue and those monologues were recorded and they were going to be put in the archives of the Newark Public Library. So Patreon, we're knocking it out with $71 again. Um, I took out another workshop with Rachel Wiley, so I took a hit there. Then in October, there's a couple of other events that I didn't pay for. So the tier rehearsal on October 9th was an event that I attended, and it was with Reggie Gaines. Reggie Gaines is working on a play called Tears uh, about growing up in Jersey City, and it's a really dope story. Uh, I can't wait for it to come out, and I'm pretty sure when it's going to come out, I'm going to want to go. And if my fiance is willing to go, she'll be able to go too. It's, it's going to be really cool. Um, October 11th and 12th, uh, there's this big arts festival in Newark that takes place uh, over the course of four or five days, and it's called the Newark Arts Festival. They've been doing it for about 20 years. 
Um, recently, I've been able to get a spot and a venue in organizing the event. So I did it last year and I did it this year. Uh, doing it this year, I had an open reading on that Friday, October 11th. And then on Saturday, I had two events back to back. One of them I put together for work because I'm the marketing and communications director. So um, a, most of my job is online, but then what I do within the communities, I book events. So I decided to book an event where we had two of the Cabin Carry Press authors read with some Brick City Collective authors. Then the three to six reading was a bash. We had about 20 something poets coming from PA, New York, New Jersey, uh, and New Jersey from like North Jersey, Central Jersey, South Jersey, and uh, Washington DC representation. So when I plan these bigger events, I love calling upon my folks from different states. So people are driving hours to come to these, and they come to these for several things. See, the thing is, a lot of the events that I'm doing right now, um, I'm not paying people to do. And that, that might deter some people from coming, but for those that do travel and do come in, they get a different network of folks in different areas. And remember that I mentioned you never know who's in the audience. Uh, some of those folks that were from different areas started to get talking with other people and now they're getting booked for different things in the area. Um, so they're just kind of like expanding and diversifying their range and their reach so it could open up more doors and more opportunities. So on October 18th, you're gonna see uh, the Moving Words Skype workshop. That's where we were going over my poems to send to Israel so they could be made into videos. And then on October 19th, Asbury Underground uh, was a feature that I got to perform with a jazz group, uh, which was really, really cool. And this was in central New Jersey, so this is the idea of me spanning my horizons. And I made $5 off of that was because, guess what? I had a book sale. Right, so uh, sometimes you're going to get a bunch of book sales, sometimes you're going to get one book sale, sometimes you're not going to get any book sales, and there's like 30 people in the audience, but there's just 30 people that aren't willing to pay for your book right now. Don't worry about it because you're going to keep doing those events and you're going to keep telling yourself you're going to perform the house down and you're reading as if you're reading for over a thousand people and someone is going to buy that book for you. So no, don't worry about that. On October 23rd, I had another event at Rutgers and you could see a lot of my big ticket places. They're the universities and they're the bigger institutions that can offer uh, payment. A word to the wise, when you're taking performances or people are calling you to see if you can perform, always ask if there's some kind of honorarium or they're offering some sort of money. I know it feels cringy to ask people if there is going to be compensation for it, but after all, they're asking you to do the event for a reason. You have a service and your service is your written word um, and your personality and your spirit and your soul. So that is worth monetary income. That is worth the investment. So sometimes they'll say yes. Sometimes they'll make room for you um, monetarily. Other times there's not room in the budget. Then you make the decision as to whether you want to take it or not. Um, I just make it a point to ask all the time when someone says, hey, would you like to read here? I always ask if there's going to be compensation. And then they're either going to give you a yes or a no. Uh, it gets easier as you keep on doing it and you'll feel less embarrassed doing it going forward. All right, I had to pay for my website on WordPress. That was $17.80. And then on Patreon, I reached the tri triple digits. So uh, now I'm in the triple digit club. So now I'm getting paid $108.44. Uh, that's 16, uh, that's about 16 folks. Now, if you're going to run the numbers at 16 folks and at $7.99, per subscription, I should be making way more than $108. But what ends up happening is that Patreon takes a cut of that. So that's why if you're thinking about the folks versus the numbers, they're not really, you know, they're not really coinciding well. I was just informed by my fiance that I make $6.91 per patron because in January I only had one patron and that was for $6.91. So thank you, Jesse, I appreciate you. November 8th, November 12th, 15th and 22nd, you'll see that I have the City of Voices Curriculum Development. That is another program I am a part of with the New Jersey Performing Arts Center and Rutgers University, Newark. And that is going to be me making so much money. I was actually supposed to get the stipend for that this year, but as I mentioned earlier in the video, you can't rely on the money coming when you need it. It's going to be coming in later, so I'm probably going to have to use that in next year's budget, but 
literally, when I say that I could just take that job and not do anything else for the year and I'll make more than I made for this whole entire year, it's that serious. So I cannot wait to let you know how much that project was about. Then on November 10th, there was a Jack Wilder 10th uh, year anniversary performance. That was a part of work and I had to film for that. The reason I put that here though was because after going to that venue, I spoke to the owner of the gallery as well as uh, Danny Schott, who is an organizer for One Hoboken, and then December 7th, I had a reading there after speaking with the gallery owner and the host from the month prior. So that's what I'm talking about with trying to form those connections. Those connections lead to other things. And then on November 23rd, across the platform, uh, it was a spot that I featured in with a dancer and it was a fundraiser. So we were fundraising by collecting donations to donate to the houseless in the city of Newark. So with that fundraiser, we raised 236 articles of clothing and toiletries and different supplies that we dispersed from our van. And then from that, there was a bunch of splashes of people wanting to donate uh, more things. So Jesse and I went to those different places, picked up those donations, and now we are in conversations with a couple of other um, organizations in the city of Newark and surrounding areas in order for us to donate those items to those facilities. All right, so now we're almost done. In December for Patreon, we made another $108.41. Um, I sold two books at that reading that I went to. I took a workshop with Jericho Brown that made me eat $20. And then on December 11th, I was able to watch the performance for the NJIT from Page to Stage program in which I had to interview with that college student. So it was really cool to see myself portrayed as another individual. Um, and it was kind of gut-wrenching too because our interview got very personal. It wasn't really about my poetry life. It was more about my personal life. So um, you're going to see in that video that I provide below that it wasn't really about talking about myself. It was about kind of weeding out concerns that we have within the community that we need to address and some of those I do address in my writing but it's different to hide behind the poem and then actually talk about something in front of people. On December 16th I decided to meet up with an old friend of mine. Uh, we did a public art project a couple of years prior and I wanted to pick her brain about possibly doing that again. So by doing this I'm trying to reopen an old door to another opportunity somewhere down the line to say hey I'm still interested in doing that again. And the reason why it was so great to do it the first time was because I, it paid me as a community organizer. It was the first time I was a community organizer for every, for anything. Then on the 18th, uh, Paul, which is the organizer for Arts by the People, hit me up and say, hey, uh, I want to talk to you about something. Let's have a meeting. So when I get an arbitrary thing like this, I usually know that work conversation is going to be involved somehow. So I go to this meeting and we talk and long story short, there might be that well there is going to be an opportunity that is going to happen for me in 2020 I don't really know what it looks like yet they're still talking about the budgets but that is also going to be something reoccurring in my 2020 budget so 2020 is going to be a really big year for the poetry business for me and I'm super excited for that uh, especially rounding out on December 21st when I did the poem recording for the poem that was going to get sent to Israel. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you if you made it to the end of watching my 2019 visual and vocal diary about all of my poetry stuff that happened this year. If there's anything that happened during this video that you would be interested in having a video about, please let me know because my next videos that are slated, which are probably going to happen in 2020, are a poetry pep talk, a guide to submittable from start to finish, and how to write a cover letter for beginners. I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to put that up because I'm very unreliable with how I sporadically put it up, but those were all videos that you requested. But going back to how much we've actually made made, the total that we made this year was $2,810.37. As to last year that I made $2,729.64. So you can see as every year goes on, I hope to make more money. As always, thank you again. Like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will see you all in the next class.